Welcome to the Deep Dive. Our mission today is, well, pretty straightforward. We're analyzing a huge atmospheric disruption that's basically rewritten the winter forecast for North America. So let's unpack this. Our sources are all pointing to the high altitude polar vortex, the PV, and it seems to have uh, suffered a massive premature collapse. We need to get into the science of why this means severe sustained cold is coming and soon. It's important to understand this isn't just a typical cold front. This is what we call a major sudden stratospheric warming event, an SSW. And the magnitude is the key here, right? Exactly. What makes this extreme is the sheer scale of the breakdown. We're seeing a stratospheric wind reversal hitting negative 28 meters per second at the 10 H pay level. Okay, hold on. You have to translate that for us. Negative 28 meters per second at 10 H pay. What does that actually tell us? Well, it tells us two critical things. First, 10 H pay, that's way up there. It's the altitude where the polar vortex lives, you know, holding all that cold air hostage over the pole. Second, that wind speed negative 28, that's an extremely strong reversal. It's almost three times the strength required to even classify this as a major disruption. For this time of year, it's basically unheard of since 1991. So for anyone who's not familiar, what exactly is the PV? How does an SSW event like this break it? Think of the PV as a massive, fast-moving river of wind circling the Arctic. Its job is to keep all that frigid polar air contained. An SSW is a sudden dramatic temperature spike. We're talking maybe 90 degrees Fahrenheit high above the Arctic. It just uh, completely shatters that wind boundary. And this is rare for November, I take it. Exceedingly rare. A major SSW this early has only happened three times in the last 70 years. Okay, and this is where it gets really interesting for me, the lag time. Once the PV is disrupted way up there, it takes, what, 10 to 14 days for us to feel it down here at the surface? That's right. That process is called stratosphere-troposphere coupling. The energy from that collapse needs time to work its way down through the atmosphere to the troposphere, which is, you know, where we live. So the timing of this SSW means the real cold air outbreak should start. When? We're forecasting it to begin in the first week of December 2025. And from there, the atmospheric pattern is locked in. It sets up this... Um, robust sustained northerly flow it's like a funnel pouring frigid air right across the midwest the great lakes and the eastern seaboard and the forecasts are showing temperatures how far below normal consistently 10 to 20 degrees fahrenheit below normal highs and the key word there is consistently right weeks not days yeah. this isn't just a weekend cold snap what makes it so persistent? It's the atmospheric signature it leaves behind a strong negative Arctic oscillation, or NAM. When an SSW of this magnitude flips that switch, our models show the pattern holds for, at a minimum, 45 days. 45 days. So operational planners should be ready for this to last through mid-January 2026. At least. And there's a compounding factor. We have a weak La Nina event going on, which already tends to favor a deep, cold trough over central and eastern North America. They're basically amplifying each other. Let's get into the regional risks. Because this is happening so early, the Great Lakes are still pretty warm, relatively speaking. Mm. What happens when sustained Arctic air moves over that open water? You get a maximum temperature contrast, and that is the perfect recipe for crippling lake effect snow, the dreaded LES. So we're talking about massive localized snow dumps. Yes, feet, not inches. Think one to two feet in those classic snow belts, like off the lakes in Western New York. It can turn a cold event into a major travel and infrastructure hazard almost instantly. And for our listeners up on the Canadian prairies, what do past events tell us? The analogs from similar events, 2014, 2021, they all point to an imminent risk of extreme wind chills. We could see values hitting minus 40 Celsius or even lower in major cities. That demands immediate action. Wow. Is there anything else that locks this cold pattern in? There is actually a final feedback loop. The early widespread snow cover that's forecast across the plains and northern Rockies, it increases the surface reflectivity. It's called the albedo effect. So the snow reflects sunlight back into space, keeping the ground even colder. Exactly. It reinforces the cold high pressure system and just helps stabilize this deep freeze for all of December. Okay, so to sum it all up, we're looking at one single sustained high risk period from early December all the way into mid-January 2026. And it's all backed by some really extreme stratospheric data. And if you connect it to the bigger picture, this kind of sustained high amplitude cold pattern makes one thing very, very likely. A white Christmas. It dramatically increases the probability across a huge part of the United States, yes. So here's a final thought to leave you with. 
The severity of this early sustained event is drawing comparisons to the legendary deep freeze periods of the early 1980s. So the question is, what do those historical analogs tell us about what it takes to manage a relentless deep freeze that lasts 45 days or more? That's your next level of exploration.